this is a thing they should do. I think, I think so. Um, Hey, look here. Rachel Bitcoffer has a few um, uh, gifts here. A historic choice. A promise kept. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. Very good. Um, uh, if you need, if you need some gifts, if you need some memes, Rachel's pumping them out over there. Uh, here's one. Uh, GOP ran on rural broadband. They ran on it like they want it, and it's because their constituents need it. Like it's a thing that is needed for Americans, not not regardless of their political beliefs, regardless of it. Now, these people need to, to deliver actual good rural broad, broadband so they can be connected to the rest of America. The only problem is, is that the GQP doesn't want them to have it. Uh, Democrats delivered it because Republicans love to promise and destroy. They love that. I mean, fascists love to promise and destroy. Like, that's the thing that they do. That is the thing they do. So Democrats delivered rural broadband. And it was great to see last night when Joe Biden brings this up. <laughs> And they have to they have to figure out, are we supposed to clap for our constituents getting broadband that we ran on? But but Joe Biden delivered. How do we do this? What do we do? Oh, my God, I can't I can't take it. I can't take it. Um, so thank you, Rachel, for your gift. Speaking of Rachel Bitcoffer, speaking of Rachel Bitcoffer. Good morning, Rachel. How are you? <laughs> Makes me happy. You noticed all our uh, me and Dougie's hard work and yes, the strike yes. back team. You know. <laughs> yes. Well, I I I love I love the the gifts and the memes that you guys come up with. It it really helps get uh, the uh, messaging in front of people. Um, I, I I think I think we live in a meme gift society, right? Like a social media kind of thing. Those small messages are important. And last night, there was those little small hints all the way through the State of the Union where Joe Biden is saying the things that Republicans want to run on. Right. Like it, it's it's so incredible to see like just just the one instance of the rule broadband, like you tweeted there, that that Joe Biden was able to say we delivered rule broadband to you. And and he even said at one point, I think he said, and you all and he looks over to Republicans and he's like, and all of you are out bragging to your constituents about it. Like it was, it was beautiful. So, what did you think about the State of the Union? What did you think about his speech? But more, more realistically, like in the political body of things, because we are in a midterm cycle here. What, what do you think it means for the midterm cycle and the messaging? I mean, the speech was is different, right? So, two weeks ago, that would have been a, a fully domestic speech, right? right? And now Ukraine forced it. I mean, really, it's mm -hmm. hard to write. That's why you had to go bullet like so fast, right? You had to go fast because they had to rewrite that speech a couple times. Um, to deal with the international focus. It's very rare that the State of the Union has a large international focus. The last time, of course, was in Iraq when Bush did the axis of evil speech that ended up fucking up the Middle East for years, right? Right. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> no I mean, really, that. really, it changed the whole dichotomy of our country. I mean, and how we no look shit. at war and, and, you know, and, and uh, uh, occupation, really, like, how, how do, do we yeah. occupy forever and ever and ever? Is that called war? Do we call it war? Does Americans right. know we're at war? I mean, it really changed that a lot. Yeah. And, you know, for me, like, I think like, I, you know, I watch it as an expert. <laughs> I mean, right. number one, guys, what you should understand is I don't have, I didn't have a cop. I mean, could have gotten the speech. I could have gone and looked at it, but I didn't fucking need to. Okay. I had all those memes ready and I knew exactly what was coming and the party could do this shit too. Imagine if there is actually a democratic digital war room, because there's something called the DNC war room. But which which account was running a war room last night? Mine or the DNC war room? Account? Right, right, definitely right. mine. Right, and I'm not saying that to float my own fucking boat. What I'm trying to say is we have to. We, we it's not going to be helpful just have one woman with 126 thousand followers doing it. You, we all have to be running on full cylinders. And like that, there. If I was in charge of shit. That State of the Union night, there would have been surrogates going on the media all, all weekend to prep it. All, you know, Ukraine would have changed it a little bit, but on, on Tuesday, certainly. And then you have to have a full court branding offensive on digital space, you know? And uh, yeah, it's it's. So, so do you think, do you think, do you think that that, that kind of failed, that, that they didn't get that messaging across? Um, it, it, that they just let it live in the speech and not outside in more of a, the aggregate and try yeah. to get the messaging in front of people. Yes. I mean, they're not going to do that. Right. 
Right. Well, and that, and that's, and that's, and that's, you know, kind of what's up to us. Right. I right. mean, like, like Twitter and, and people who think that, who think that quote unquote Democrats messaging sucks. You're the Democrats messaging. You're it. Like yeah. you can, you can do this. So like, and I'm making it easy on them, Tony. I mean, here's the thing is like, I was so delighted that you were showing people the activity of last night because eventually, very soon, I'm going to load up um, the whole toolkit on to the Strike Pack website. But right now, it's accessible on Twitter. And what I'm trying to tell people is here's the message go and get it mm -hmm. in front of people, right? And like when I lay out the toolkit, I'll, I will put a guide out with it, right? Uh, but to give you kind of a preview of that, like my vision now is like, okay, let's make a digital grassroots, like basically field team, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to be posting shit on your Twitter or like the people you follow. But what, what I want to teach people to do is take these memes, these ads that are glance ads, because that's what I'm making there. And these are not memes. These are glance ads. Okay? Right, right, and, right. And they are designed to get the message, even if the person doesn't want to fucking read it. See how right. that works? Like you mm -hmm. get, you read that message, even if you don't want to see it. Right. Right. And now it's about eyeballs. Right. So like I can make shit all fucking dead guys at the end of the day. And, you know, most of like the Armina school budget has gone to creation. But my concern is distribution. Distribution. We're talking about millions of dollars. And right now I am you know, cockled out of the money system of the democratic orbit because other people are invested in ideas that I, I I've, I've argued have total merit in many capacities, but are not our best uh, source for winning in 2022. And the Texas turnout last night is a great demonstration of that. So I can promise you the GOP did not outloop them two to one on turnout because so many voters couldn't vote. OK, right. It's because Democrats don't give a fuck right now. They don't know what's happening. They're not being told to be fearful and they don't give a fuck. <laughs> and you can see it right in that data. Right. And I'll tell you guys, there's a lot of Beto fans and myself included. Right. You cannot win that race if you do not get a massive enthusiasm push in Texas because he's got to convert. He's got to convert right leaning Indies. And the way that you do that is not by pretending to be a Republican. The way you do that is by disqualifying the opposition. OK, but he, he has to meet that with it, it's it's the Georgia formula. You can't win in Georgia unless you can win the conversion pool and the turnout game. And it's the same thing in Texas. Right. So you so you think he can win, but it's it's a it's a it's a it's oh, I'm not a saying that. No, uh, not at all. I would not. Right now, guys, to be clear, Rachel is telling you the truth. OK, right yep. now, there's two indicators that matter. The generic ballot, which when people ask. Do you want Republicans or Democrats to control Congress in the fall? And the enthusiasm advantage, which is how many people say they're very excited to vote, divided by party, like breakdown by party. And on both of those metrics, we are trailing. And if we continue to trail, then they will win 30 seats in the House. And if 30 mm -hmm. seats in the House are getting one, you're flipping Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin to GOP hands for 2024, the governorships. And, and there's no way a state like Texas can flip. But that right. said, the Texas, Florida, Arizona, and Georgia races to me are a packaged messaging opportunity. Here is what your life looks like when Republicans control it. They right. kill you. They steal your shit. They poison your children. Right? Like yep. that's, so like there's a lot of value in Beto because he's such a great candidate. And in like that narrative, being able to run through the whole Sun Belt. So to me, it's a still a very valuable race. It's not impossible to win, <laughs> but right. we can, we're not winning shit unless we deal with the generic ballot. It doesn't matter if it's Florida, fucking Ohio with that nut job, J.D. Vance. At the end of the day, guys, we have an electorate. Our side, our coalition is not engaged and we must, must address it. So, so you're saying we have to engage the vote, and that means engaging your neighbors, engaging people you know, talking to them, showing this stuff, sharing this stuff, and not just not just in DMs, not just on Twitter, but when you go to the grocery store, when you're at your church, when you're at your community, talking yep. about these things, and and knowing how to talk about them and how the message is, is wrapped around. Because really, honestly, the, the, the Republican Party, the GQP, has handed us this on a platter, this win. Yes. Into I mean, with with their with their sycophantry to to Putin and at the, the 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 murderous dictator that he is and give it, serving that up on a platter that that gives us more more 
fodder and to yeah. show them exactly what they want for us. Like, oh, you want the Putin for us? And what does that mean for us? What does that right. mean for your broadband? What does that mean for your schools? What does for that your mean? Your game's on. That's your right. Gay son, right. They right. want they, they want to fucking take your gay son and put him in prison, dude, <laughs> or kill him. Right. I mean, that if you're aspiring to Putin's gay policy, that's what that is, dude. It's not. <laughs> there's no right. gay people in Russia because if you get caught being gay, your fucking life is over. Right. right. And that's what Tucker Carlson every night is 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 in, uh, aspiring to on Fox News. Right. So like at the end of the day, yes, you got to reach out to all of these other people, the, what I call the marginal members of the 2020 2018 coalition. And the message that you give them can't be, well, they got you some bridges and shit, dude. It's got to be if you don't fucking vote, then America, as you know, it will die. And these people are coming for you. <laughs> right. Just like Putin comes for other people. Yeah. I mean, what what is what is to say? Because uh, Donald Trump, the Cheeto Dust mobster, stands on stage and says, Putin had such a great real estate deal. What a great deal. Two dollars of sanctions. And he got all this land and he took this whole country and it's a great thing and it's fantastic. What makes you think that they wouldn't have that view of, quote unquote, a blue state? Right. What makes you think that they they wouldn't occupy California. What makes you think they wouldn't overthrow a democratically elected state government in California or New York? What makes you think they won't do that? They aspire to be Putin. What and makes you think they won't? Tons more violent, dude. They're, they've got shit tons of guns. They've been cultured to see you as an animal, me as an animal. Okay, mm -hmm. we are not even human beings because of right wing media propaganda. So, like, dude, I hate to tell you, hippies, <laughs> but unless you see a future. In which, you know, your kids can't fucking eat. You probably want to vote. Right. And who is the people that, that we talk to? Because I think what you're saying is people who don't normally engage in politics, right? Like me and, you are constant, me, me and you are constantly involved in politics. We're watching it every single day, every single move. Uh, but there are people out there that they don't even know who the vice president of the United States is. They don't yeah, know. Let me be clear State too, is. Tony, we are, we are, we are one percenters and anyone listening to this podcast is a one percenter. And even if you get a million people audience, right. you're going to still be a one percenter and all their, all the people listening to you will still be in that 1% because 98% of the fucking country doesn't even know what NATO is. If you ask right. them to define it, maybe now, maybe after a week, we could get to like 30%. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Like, they, like they could figure out they could figure out a, an explanation that would exactly. resemble exactly and like democrats want to do all this complex nuanced like special drill down policy shit and i'm like dude they don't fucking know anything they don't right. know the republican party has collapsed into extremism they don't understand that the entire republican tried to a party conspired in a plot to steal the election in right. 2020 right and are all under federal and fucking investigation for it. they don't know any of this shit Okay. Right. So like what I'm trying to get people to understand is our messaging should do two things. It should motivate and, and disqualify the other party. Right. But it should it has to tell our coalition what is happening and what the stakes are in the future for them. Right. Right. Well, and I think I think I think we can manage to make that happen. But it is a big feat because there are so many there's so many ears out there to get this message into and not just get it into, but to get them to understand in a way like you're saying, because this is this is kind of um, I, I don't I don't bring out data here. We don't analyze, you know, a lot of stuff on the show here. We try to keep the messaging very simple because I think I think things are really simple, like. And Democrats want to use the phrase universal pre-K. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Just say you want to start school at age three instead of five. Like, that's no so doubt. simple, right? There's things that are so simple about when you're talking about these things. Well, we universal health care. What a dumb phrase that is. You just don't want to go broke because of a medical bill. Like, no shit. yeah. And Tony, I mean, here it is. Like, so like I, when, when, I, when, I, when I hit ESPN radio, like I want to hit all the sports radios, right? And right. what I'm going to do with it is real fucking simple. It's not complex at all. I'm going to say, hey, you don't do sports betting without looking at stats. Why in the fuck do you vote that way? Right. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, right. That's the ad. That's the whole ad except for the F bomb, right? Well, well, because the truth is those people who don't know what NATO is, they know a, the exact inflation rate that is supposed to be on a football because Tom Brady tried exactly. to deflate Exactly. They're all football. capable of knowing it. Right. They don't, you know, our culture, 
our civic culture is the re I mean, the, at the fucking core of what's going on here is this is this American public that decade after decade has been cultured to think politics is disgusting and I'm morally superior by not participating in it. Right. I mean, that's what we teach people. Have you ever met anyone and you ask them this about politics? Like, oh, I don't vote. And then right, and they're right, smug right. about it. Like you're some kind of insect because you fucking maintain your own government. Right. <laughs> right? right. But that's because not, I'm not blaming it on them. I'm blaming it on our culture. Right. right. That's a cultural, socio, like culture phenomena in America. And it tells people you should have the right to have all this privilege with no responsibility. And in fact, don't even look over here because it's icky. You right. Know? It's fucking and, and, terrible. Well, and so if we unwind that a, a bit, because that, that is an interesting observation. And I like that observation that it is the civ civic culture that we have to not participate in things like politics, but to participate in things like uh, sports, professional wrestling. And it almost seems like, that at the point when Donald Trump entered the race as this clown and this reality star, that he was able to engage some of those populations that that didn't participate in that in that civic culture. And he created this own different reality of civic culture like they believe these things that aren't even close to being true because somehow that got engaged. And I, I, it, there's a, even more complicated things where like in Georgia in the runoff for the Senate runoff, he was able to convince a lot of his voters that, Hey, it's rigged anyways. Like, like Democrats have done for years. Like, Oh, it's, I can't, you can't win a red. It's a red state. My vote doesn't count. So why should I vote? You know, like even if I wanted to vote, you know, those kind of yeah. cultural And they'll have that mentality, Tony sitting in one of the most competitive house races in the fucking country. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. Like they won't even know, like they're like sitting in Georgia six, but they're like, Oh, not Georgia, but whatever. Idaho six. And it's like Oklahoma or whatever. It's, it's, it's the red state, but they're in a competitive race and they should be voting, you know, at right. the state legislature legislative level and we don't we don't do any of that education they have i mean i, I just come back from the Ch charlie kirk show right like that hasn't aired yet and maybe it will never air but if it does like people are gonna see this turning point found place that i went to tony i shit you not it's sitting in one of the most expensive lots in phoenix in tempe arizona and they have three different large office structure buildings all devoted to turning point and that okay. Turning Point USA, by the way, is Charlie Kirk's organization, which focuses on converting college kids into, into ideologues, right? right. You know, little Nazis. Well, <laughs> but right, the well, point is, and, and like his staffers in there, they were flying all around the US, okay? Because it's all financed by the tune of billions of goddamn dollars. And I can't find one fucking person to write a check and let us shore up the Democrats' weak sauce fucking effort in 2022. Right. So so let let's talk about that for a second because um you did you did record with Charlie Kirk right is that yeah yeah sure at, did and, and and so they haven't given you any any indication whether that is going to release or not I I take it I take it Rachel uh, Bitcoffer ate Charlie Kirk's lunch a bit I would may, maybe that's why they won't release it you can I don't know we'll see right <laughs> I mean so I want it to be released so that should tell you something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but what you're describing, what you're describing is uh one. It, it, this isn't the Republican National Committee, right? This isn't the nope. the party. This is a organization outside that. Uh, just one of them. And you're saying that they have floors and floors. Uh, dozens they have, dozens of they have floors, floors and floors in three structures. You can Google Map this shit. Turning Point USA headquarters in Tempe, Phoenix. I'm sure you can fucking see it, dude. Right. And that is and that is not the RNC, but they coordinate with the RNC. It's all centralized. The messaging's all centralized. Right. And right. we don't have a goddamn thing like that, dude. <laughs> right. So so moving towards that, I mean, do 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 you see the Democrats creating something like that? Because I I because CPAC yeah. CPAC was last weekend, right? And yeah. and and Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk's Turning Point USA has their own CPAC type yeah. thing, right? No, why not. don't why don't Democrats have a CPAC yeah. type? Well, like Leo, to be clear, there's no one in charge of the Democratic Party. There's people in charge of various institutions, and they run bureaucracies. Okay, they right. don't run electoral strategy. 
There is, in my opinion, no brain trust for this party. But if there was, and I was in charge of it, Tony, I can guarantee you the first motherfucking thing I'd be doing is copying ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, which is the, the outfit that mm-hmm. gives them all their model ledge, okay? And then I would turn our model ledge into wedge shit. And I would put that shit in state legislatures and fucking drive, drive, drive enthusiasm the way they do with right. their shit, right? Um, and the second thing I would do is, is judicial watch because that's a conservative thing for the courts. And its main purpose over the years has been to poison American public opinion against the Supreme Court and to see it, no matter its mix, as a liberal you know, um, right. radical institution. Right? Even when, even, even when it's not yeah. even close to that. And they're still talking about that. Like they'll, they'll get a one fa- one disfavorable s- decision and judicial watch and, and all of these organizations pop. And so we need the courts. We need a federalist society too, to go with that. So we need right. a robust law school program that is encouraging kids to, <laughs> to not fall into this trap with the federalist society and then, you know, and, and of course, the war room, we need a war room with a small cabinet, a general with autonomy and authority. And we need right. to start centralizing our shit right now, or we're going to lose that generic ballot and enthusiasm fight. And if we're losing that in September, then I don't even need to stick around for the election, frankly. Do you do you think if if the Democrats can manage to put together some infrastructure and and and, and I you know like you said before I think the infrastructure lives there it just there's no connection between it right there's no it, it's all there it's just not there there right so it's that's it's, how you talk about it right so like I I worked with one group and they sent me a copy of something and I love that they were using Democrats to deliver. Right. right. Everybody should be using that every chance they get whenever they're talking about any credit claiming topic. But anyway, you know, the first version was, Demo- you know, this was their first revised version and it was Democrats deliver, you know, safe roads and bridges and water. And I'm like, that's good because now it's short and someone's going to see it. Right. right. The message has to be like a glance message to be able to see because most people aren't going to read it. They're going to take it out of the box. They're going to see it's political junk mail and they're going to throw it. <laughs> so right. you have to glance it. And but I wrote back and I was like, oh, but you can still be better. And let me tell you how Democrats deliver roads that don't crush your spouse on the way home from work. Right. Right. Water that doesn't poison your children. with lead. That's it. That's right? it. you got to make the image. Right. Right. Give an image. And I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I'm trying to slut myself out as much as possible to, to help people with messaging, to refine messages, to make them more valuable. But it's not going to replace a position where I can actually force a wall operation in these competitive races. Right. And those competitive races, uh, those 30 that you were saying earlier, because that's really where the rubber meets the road because, and we don't know exactly what 30, right. At this point, because some of those races haven't developed, but there's, you know, what you're saying is 30 races. There's maybe 30 seats at stake here that could, that could put us in a position where we don't want to be where they're, they're talking because let's be frank, if they get those 30 seats, they're not putting Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House. No, probably That's not. not what's and happening. Even, and even and if that, they do, I mean, is Kevin going to stand up for democracy? Clearly not, right? Right, so right. Even if he manages to survive that, right, the, the, what will happen in the House is catastrophic. Right. And like in Virginia, when Youngkin took over, what he did is catastrophic, okay? Right. Right. Within his confines of he doesn't control the one chamber that wasn't up for election that cycle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank God, right? right. But, he, but he's got a couple of Democrats who are going full apologetic Democrat and they're joining the Republican coalition to overturn all kinds of shit. Okay. And you have to, you have got to let the voters know this is the change that you're signing up for. Are you sure this is the kind of change you want? Right, right. Well, but I do have to jump today, Tony. I'm so sorry. I got no. That's you. okay. That's okay. I, I appreciate you joining us and that's come back. I love anytime. having you here, like all day, five days a week, and I can't wait to see how sh- the show takes off. In oh, the future. we got, we got, we got big news next I week. Know. I, I, I know it's, it's going to be big, and I think everyone's going to love it. And uh, I hope to, to have you back next week, and we'll talk about that more. Rachel, you have a good day. And yep. uh, make make sure you send uh, uh, that. Um, give, give us the link for the the toolkit. And we'll oh, uh, yeah, it's not up there. yet, guys. It's something okay. that me me and my my little uh, 
Padawan are going to be getting together now that we've got a good amount of content to get out there. And then I'm going to write up a little guide, like Indivisible's Guide for Organizing Grassroots. It will be Rachel Bittekoffer's Guide to, you know, setting a referendum narrative against the Republican Party because that- no one else is going to fucking run against the Republicans, guys, if we don't do it for the Democrats. So Let's do it. Let's get our message out there and let's yeah. keep pounding. Rachel, uh, audience, stick around. We'll be right back. Thanks, Rachel. I Have a good y'all. day. See you. See you soon. We'll be right back. Mark, 60 seconds. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast.